Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me begin, first of all, by uh, introducing myself. I am Janet Edeme. I'm the head of the Rural Economy Division uh, within the African Union Commission. And my division is also the focal division within the, within the African Union Commission that also looks at issues uh, pertaining to coordinating and reporting on the status of implementation of the African Union agenda on land issues and challenges. We might recall that this uh, declaration was adopted in 2009 in South Libya by the African Union heads of state and government. And so coming now down to this conference, this conference is a conference that we organize every two years. Uh, the first conference had taken place in 2017, the inaugural conference in, at the AU headquarters in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia, and this is the second uh, conference of its type. Now, the focus of this conference uh, for this year, we're looking at how corruption is impacting um, on land governance on our continent. And we do realize that if we're not able to address the issues of corruption and how it's impacting on land governance, it has a very significant impact both on the African Union Agenda 2063, being able to achieve uh, the socioeconomic uh, development goals that had been uh, adopted in the Agenda 2063, and then even also translating it as well into more concrete uh, achievables. For example, ensuring that we can have food security, be food, food self-sufficient, and if we're not able to address those issues, then we're really going to be having a negative impact on our Agenda 2063. And so the issue surrounding corruption in land governance itself has become very critical and it's fundamental and, and it's also going to be having some significant impacts on these other broader socioeconomic development goals. So that was why the theme for this year was focusing on how we can begin to address the issues of corruption and how it's impacting negatively on land governance and all its other ramifications uh, that impacts on our development as a continent. How do you describe uh, the issue of corruption and uh, the women's uh, uh, impact on its impact on women, especially in Africa? Yes, it's good that you have said especially on women, uh, because when we're looking at issues of corruption, it's, it's gender blind. Corruption affects both the men and also the women. But for the women, it becomes even uh, more significant, because in the first place, women do not have access nor control to land. And so the issues of ensuring that we can have uh, land tenure security for women, who we know are about 70%, of the population that actually produces the food that we eat on our continent. And so if women are not able to have secure access to the land, then it means that we're also jeopardizing our food security. So that is why the issues of corruption and the inability of women to have access to, to tenure security on their lands also impacts significantly on our food security on the continent. So it's important that if we're going to address the issues of corruption, we also have to be targeted in ensuring that the challenges that the women are facing in terms of being able to access secure land tenure rights are also addressed within the broader discussions around corruption in land governance. What do you think should be the first priority that the governments in Africa should do to address this both the challenge of corruption in relation to land and women? Okay, the first thing is um, we, we need to start from the declaration, the African Union um, Agenda on Land that was adopted in 2009. That becomes the first broader continental framework document that the governments can use. And a number of our member states have already begun to um, facil um, they have been able to make use of that decision and working together with the framework and guidelines that had also been de developed by the Commission through the adoption of this declaration. We've been able to work with our member states in reviewing their land policies, in supporting them in terms of capacity development, in giving them the necessary technical assistance for them to ensure that they can upgrade their land information systems and data management. And so for us, the main critical issue would be ensuring that our member states are able to implement their policies as relates to land. And if there are challenges in terms of how those policies can be implemented, then the Commission with other partners can work together with our member states to ensure that that can be addressed, particularly the policies that might be in place that might also um, impede the ability of our countries to be able to translate those policies to favorable actions on the ground for the women population. Now land seems only considered as economic value in most African countries and the cheapest place where land is now in Africa, especially when it comes to investment. So for the sake of investment, it has become very cheap and how do you think this will affect uh, the local community, especially the women, and how should it should be addressed in the, by the government? Yes, yeah, we do agree now that um, we've been having a lot of um, speculators and huge um, investors who are also coming onto the, into the continent and also seeking to acquire land. 
So what we have done at the level of the African Union Commission is that we've been able to develop what we call the guiding principles on large-scale land-based investments. So we already have these guiding principles that have been developed at the level of the Commission, and these guiding principles identify specific intervention areas that our member states need to take on board when they are having these negotiations with the land speculators or the large large-scale investors. So what we do is we, we work with our member states, we work with the communities, we ensure that we can raise awareness to the communities about the guiding principles that could facilitate the negotiations that both the communities and the government and also the large-scale investor would be having. So we believe that if our member states are able to make use of these documents, and by the way, it has also been adopted uh, by the ministers responsible for agriculture, rural development, water and environment. So we believe that if this document is able to be utilized by our member states, it would really help to ensure that we have a win-win situation when we have large land speculators coming in and also the, the interests of the communities and also of the governments is taken together and there's a consensual agreement to how the land is supposed to be used.